Katie and welcome back to my booktube channel. So for this video I will be doing my very first reading vlog which I'm very excited for. This is going to be books TikTok made me read and I'm going to be reading a ton of books that I've seen all over TikTok and also just books that have been on my radar for a while, but I feel like I just started looking at the book talk side of TikTok and there's so many books that I see over and over again that I haven't read, so it just feels like a constant reminder that I need to read them. So I figured let's just try to read them this week. It's currently Sunday, April 11th, I think, and I will be doing this until next Sunday, so I've never done this before, so I'm not really sure how I'm going to go about it. I think I'll tell you guys which books are in the running that I might read this week and then before I start it I'll give you guys a little summary and maybe some thoughts before I get into it and then I'll try to update you guys I don't know maybe every 100 pages or just whenever I feel like I need to tell you guys how I'm feeling and I will also do my very best to make this spoiler free I don't want to ruin these books for you guys but I might tell you like what page I'm on or what chapter I'm on if there's a part I really want to talk about and I'll tell you how I'm feeling during that part so if you've read it you can maybe flip to that part and see what I'm talking about or you'll just know like if there's a part that's making me upset or a part that's making me cry you'll probably know what I'm talking about but I also want to make sure that I can express myself without spoiling things for you guys because I'd be really sad if I watched a reading vlog and it ruined the book for me so I won't do that to you and if for some reason there is a part where I have a spoiler I'll make sure to put a warning up on the screen but let me go through my book options for this week. First, we have Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. I finally read the Shadow and Bone trilogy, and before the show comes out on April 23rd, I really need to read this duology. So I did start this one today, but I'm only like 20 pages in, so I don't really have any thoughts. I will get back to this in a second, but... We have this duology, which is kind of my priority for this week, so we'll see what I read after I get this duology done. But we also have To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. We have Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy. Crave by Tracy Wolf. And The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. And I also have Circe by Madeline Miller and I just recently got The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller so I will probably end up doing a part two because I'm pretty sure I won't get to all of the books that I just showed you so if you guys would want a part two of books that TikTok made me read another reading vlog that'd be great and I will include these or maybe I might just make this my a separate reading vlog let me know in the comments what you think or what you would prefer but I definitely will read all of these books at some point because these are some of the ones that I'm most excited about. I also got a lot of these recently, so that kind of helps make me excited. But like I said, I started Six of Crows today and I actually do like a good chunk of my reading at work because I work at a hotel and I do laundry. So when things are drying, sometimes I get a little bit of a chance to read a few pages in my book. So that's where I read the 20 pages today. So some days I read a ton. Some days like today we were really busy so I only got like 20 pages done. But so far I'm really liking it. I don't really have a feel for it. It's only 20 pages in. But I can definitely tell it's Lee Bardugo's writing. I feel like I can really picture the setting. And right now I'm in my second perspective. Because I think there's probably all six of their perspectives in here. I am not really sure. I also realized that I did not give you a synopsis of this book, but I feel like most people know what it's about. But in case you don't, Six of Crows is about Kaz, who is a criminal given the opportunity to do this deadly heist, but he can't do it alone, so he puts together this team of people, and together there's a convict, there's a sharpshooter, a runaway, a spy, a heart render, and a thief. And they need to figure out a way to work together to complete this heist. And I love that. I've heard amazing things about this duology. I enjoyed Shadow and Bone, 
and that whole trilogy, but I think most people end up really liking this more, so I'm really excited because even though I enjoyed Shadow and Bone, it wasn't like my favorite, so I'm excited to see my thoughts. I feel like this is going to be a very long reading vlog, so bear with me. I'll try to put maybe the time codes or something in the description so you know what order I talk about things, and you can skip to whatever book you want to hear me talk about, but... I'm very excited. I also, so far, have really enjoyed that the chapters seem to be pretty long because I think this is told from a ton of different perspectives and if the chapters are too short, I get really confused with whose perspective I'm reading. So I enjoy the fact that they're long chapters so far because you are able to kind of like dive into one person at a time before it switches to somebody else. So that's probably my favorite part so far, but again, I'm only 20 pages in, so I will update you guys when I get a little further along, but I'm really excited to read this duology. Okay, so I am now about 60 pages in, so I've read the first three chapters. I met three different characters, although I'm not really sure if the first one is like important to the story. I guess we'll find out. But I met Kaz and Inej for sure. So I really love both of their characters. They're very interesting in different ways. I'm really excited to see more of them because I feel like they have the majority of the section or the chapters. I kind of like skimmed through to see like the different character names. But I feel like Kaz is a very interesting character. He's very like self-assured, at least at the beginning. And it's really cool to like see him interact with other people and see like his reputation so I'm very excited to see more of him we also just found out what the heist is about so that's really cool I'm really excited that it was revealed really early and the Grisha that you see have some different abilities than what we saw in the Shadow and Bone trilogy which I really like because I feel like if they had the exact same abilities we would kind of know what to expect but now there's like a little bit of a twist and so I think that's really cool because this is a completely different series so I love that element too. I don't really have too many thoughts yet because it's still early on but I might not update again tonight just because it's really late it's almost midnight so I will probably see you guys tomorrow also tomorrow's my fiance's birthday so I don't know how much I will read but hopefully I'll at least read a little bit and give you guys some more of my thoughts it is now Monday and I've read about 25% of Six of Crows now so I just started part two and I met Nina and Matthias as well and they're very interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about either of them, honestly. It seems like they had some kind of past that I'm sure we'll find out at some point. But they're both, I don't know. They definitely add an interesting twist to the story, so we'll see. Matthias is kind of annoying me right now, but I feel like he might grow on me, so we'll see about that. But I feel like the last chapter I just finished, they kind of finally assembled the team of people going on this heist. So I'm excited that... I kind of know who's all on the team now and we'll see what happens next. That's really all that's changed, I feel like. So yeah, I'll see you guys maybe when I hit 50%, we'll see. Okay, so I am a little over 50% done. I am on chapter 21 right now and I'm honestly really loving it. I feel like this book started out a little slow for me. Um, I like still really enjoyed the writing and getting to know the characters, but it wasn't a book that I never wanted to put down if that makes sense but now that I'm like halfway through I really don't want to put it down I feel like I finally am like really really into it and I'm really loving all of the characters they're probably some of the most complex characters I've read about because I feel like I don't fully understand any of them yet so like that's kind of fun I really love Kaz I just he's really again really complex I feel like Every time I think I understand him, he, like, says something different or does something. And he's very, like, unpredictable and also, like, really smart. And it's just really fun to watch how he goes about all of these situations. And I really love his bond with Inej. I feel like their relationship is very interesting. And I'm really excited to see how it develops throughout this duology. And also Nina and Math Matthias. Matthias? I'm not really sure how to say his name. I'm going to say Matthias. But... They're really interesting too because of like their past that they had before they have now kind of reconnected. And so it's really interesting to learn more and more details about them. 
and I'm definitely interested to see how their relationship transforms as well because they don't really get along right now but there's still like those little touches of a little bit more and so I'm a little excited about that and I'm really loving the plot so far like even though it's this heist and like this quest essentially that they're all going on it's very unique and very interesting and I'm loving all of the different things that are happening. It's really hard for me to tell you guys the parts that I like without spoiling things but I'm really really enjoying it and I might end up finishing it tonight. I really didn't think I was going to because I was only on page 60 when I started but now I'm on page 260 so we're definitely getting there but I'm loving it so far and now I can see why this is hyped up so much because I am kind of obsessed. <laughs> I just finished chapter 34 and I feel betrayed. I can't tell you why because I don't want to spoil it for you, but they're kind of in like the thick of it and the heist portion of everything and I feel betrayed. That's all I can tell you. If you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. Just flip to that chapter. But I just had to come on and tell you that. I don't have very many thoughts right now other than I was totally loving this book until this happened. I mean, still loving it if I'm this upset about it, but yeah, still really great book, but I feel betrayed and I had to run over here and tell you guys because it caught me off guard. I knew that I didn't trust that person, but I still had faith, you know, like I had hope for them and now I don't have hope for them anymore because I, it hurts me. I finished it. I can't believe all the plot twists that happened in the last hundred pages. There was like one that I kind of saw coming, but there were definitely a couple more that caught me off guard on top of my last little clip that I gave you guys of feeling betrayed. There were even more after that that caught me off guard, but I definitely loved this book more than I was expecting. I was super scared to pick this up because you know, there's so much hype about it. I feel like anywhere in the book community that you go, this is probably like the first book that really gets recommended to you. Like everybody loves it. And that usually freaks me out because I feel like I'm kind of picky when it comes to certain things, but I'm so glad that I really did love this. I fell in love with all of the characters. I was really worried because six main characters is kind of a lot of people to try to connect to, especially when there's this many perspectives, but I really do love all of them. And I feel like I finally understand why people talk so much about this duology and these characters. And I especially love Kaz and Inej. Like, they're definitely my favorites. They were my favorites from the very beginning. But, like, throughout the book, the other characters definitely grew on me. And I love them so much. And I'm very glad that I have Crooked Kingdom with me as well. Because I just, I need to continue and binge this as well. Because I need to know what happens. It left off in a very important little part so i'm definitely gonna read this one next i'm scared because i feel like a lot of people have some deeper emotions about this one so i'm kind of scared because if there were great plot twists in six of crows i feel like crooked kingdom might wreck me a little bit so we will see but i probably won't start this one tonight it's kind of late so i will update you guys tomorrow with some of my initial thoughts but overall, if you couldn't tell, I'm definitely giving this five stars. I would give it six if I could. I loved it so much. I loved being back in the Grishaverse. I feel like I enjoyed the world in Shadow and Bone, but I loved it so much more in here because you get that similar vibe, but it also feels so different with these different characters in a different part of that world. And I loved that. I love the characters way more in this than I did in Shadow and Bone. And the plot had me hooked. Like once I got really into it about a fourth to like halfway through, I couldn't put it down. It was like all I thought about. So it's amazing. I will try to leave a fuller review on Goodreads and I'll also have a part of my video for my April wrap up talking about this. So you get to hear more of my thoughts, but I love it. I'm so excited to see some of these characters in Shadow and Bone, which comes out April 23rd. So yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> It is Tuesday and I worked earlier and I actually did not get a lot of reading done today but I did start Crooked Kingdom and I love it so far. It picks up right where Six of Crows left off 
So that's really great and I'm excited to be back with the characters even though it hasn't been that long. I just finished Six of Crows last night, but I already missed them. So I'm excited to see what's in store with this, but I feel like talking about this book, I'm probably going to have some spoilers. I'm going to try really hard not to spoil a lot, but I feel like since it's a sequel, it's really hard to not spoil stuff from Six of Crows. And also, I don't know, I just feel like this book seems harder for me to talk about without spoiling things. So if you haven't read Six of Crows, definitely skip ahead to the next book I'll be talking about. In the description, I will try to make sure that I have the time codes for each book so you can just go ahead and skip ahead. And even if you haven't read Crooked Kingdom yet, I would probably skip ahead to the next book because I will have like a spoiler free review on my Goodreads and also in my April wrap up, but I'm really worried that I'm going to spoil some things without meaning to. So I would just go ahead and skip ahead just to be safe. This book picks up right where Six of Crows left off, like I said, which I was not expecting the ending of Six of Crows with Inej being kidnapped basically and I was not expecting it, but definitely seems like the perfect setup for Crooked Kingdom. And I am on her first chapter from her perspective in this book, so chapter four. And I'm glad they're having her perspective too, because I missed her. I miss seeing her with the group, but I'm really glad that they are trying to get her back. And that seems to be like one of the main parts of this book. So I'm really excited and I hope they get her back soon because I really want to see her with Kaz, well, with everybody, but I really want her relationship with Kaz to kind of blossom because I'm really rooting for them. They had kind of a nice moment at the end of Six of Crows. I mean, to a point. And I just really want them to be together and have like one moment of like them declaring their feelings. So hopefully that happens. And I'm really interested to see what else happens in here because they still have that issue with the new Grisha powers. So I'm excited to see. But like I said, I'm not that far in. I'm only like 50 or 60 pages in. So don't really have too many thoughts, but I really love it. And one thing that I remembered that I wanted to say when I started this book is I really love how these characters do these really like cunning and intelligent things and they like they have this way of making things turn out the way they need them to, if that makes sense. And sometimes you're like, how the heck did that work out in their favor? That makes no sense. And I love that they walk you back through the steps for how they made sure it played out the way they wanted. Hopefully that makes sense. I feel like if you have read these books, you know what I mean. Like Kaz is really good about having this whole plan, but like keeping certain things a secret to make sure that nothing is leaked. And then at the end, you get kind of like, told the steps of how he made it happen and I always think that's really cool because I love kind of thinking about all the logic and all the stuff that he makes happen because he's super smart and I really hope this is English but <laughs> that's like the main thing I really like about these books I feel like it really makes you think Okay, so again, if you don't want spoilers for Crooked Kingdom, please skip to the next book because it's really hard to talk about this without spoiling some things that are happening. So the next few clips will have some spoilers in them, but feel free to skip to the next book if you want. But I am 25% of the way done with this. I just finished part two and I am so glad that they rescued Inej because I just wanted to see them reunited and I love seeing all their plans to do all these big like escapes and all I don't know it, I don't know how to explain it but any little job that they do is just so fun to watch happen and to see how they plan it and how Kaz always has things up his sleeve and it's just amazing and what I love about this book is that it started out really fast paced which I'm sure it will keep being really fast paced throughout the rest of the book but Six of Crows had a slower start, which totally made sense because we had to get to know the characters and the plot and figure out what was happening. But I love that it starts really quick right off the bat and it's very like action packed and that's really great. And I also really love that like in Six of Crows, it was like one plot they were all working toward and there's still is that theme in here but you get to dig a lot deeper into each character and you get a lot of their past and a lot of the personal things that they're dealing with and things that they have to figure out and I really like that too because I care about these characters so much and so I love that we're getting some more background knowledge and we're kind of rooting for them all for a different reason and 
I really love that and I'm glad they're reunited. There's a lot of crazy things happening right now that they didn't expect so I'm not too sure what's going on with that but I'm excited to find out more so I will see you guys at the 50% mark. I feel so bad for Wylan. I am on page 224 and we just found out more about his mom and found out that she is still alive and I feel so bad for him because I feel like he's like the little kid of the group you know like I mean he's proved himself a lot lately since the beginning like he's grown so much but he's still like the one I have a soft spot for the most I feel like because he just seems like I don't know like the little kid and I just want to protect him I want to protect all of them but especially Wylan and so the fact that he seems so like devastated and confused and I just want to give him a hug. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. I just feel so bad for him. Hey guys, it is Wednesday and I honestly don't remember the last time I updated you guys, but I haven't really read too much since the last time, I don't think. I'm now on page like 300, so like chapter 22 and things are not going well in here. I mean, it's still a great book, but like they had this huge plan and everything's going wrong. <laughs> and I'm honestly worried for them. I feel like usually I'm so used to like things working out for them with like minor mishaps here and there, but like this is like going really wrong. So I'm a little worried that something's gonna happen to one of them and I hope that it doesn't because I love them all so much and I still believe in them. I still think they can pull it off or at least, you know, save each other and maybe regroup, but I'm a little worried and I couldn't remember the last time I updated. So I wanted to tell you guys my thoughts so far, but I still really love it and I'm hoping to finish it today and maybe start a different book. We'll see, but I really love it. And I feel like the writing is really good because usually with most books, I skim a lot of like the descriptions and I just skip to a lot of the dialogue. But in Six of Crows and now Crooked Kingdom, I feel like I've read every single word because the writing's really good. I love all the characters and I'm like very invested in the plot. So I feel like that just proves that these are both five star books for me and I'm really loving it. And I, I don't want it to end because I love these characters, but I also like want to keep reading and flying through it so I'm kind of torn I'm trying to read like really slow because I don't want to say goodbye to these characters I feel like this vlog is just like random blurbs of my thoughts but I'm on page I don't know like 340 or something and just when I was losing all hope because again things were not going well but just when I was losing all hope, Kaz has another plan. He always has plans. I have a lot of faith in him, although he was kind of frustrating me for a second there because he is very stubborn. And I know that was probably just his way of caring for the other people in the group, but he almost made me really upset if he followed through with his original plan. But now he seems to have a better plan. So I'm excited to see how it goes, but I'm still really scared because there's only like a hundred, no, maybe there's still 200 pages left. I'm not sure, but there's not a lot of book left, I feel like, and I feel like something really bad has to happen, and I'm not ready for it. I hope I'm wrong, but I feel like something's going to happen to at least one of these characters, and I'm going to be really sad, so stay tuned for that. You guys, I just finished chapter 24, and I'm upset because I was so excited when Jesper finally went to kiss Wylan. I was a little surprised that they were the first ones to kiss because the other couples I'm rooting for, I thought they would, well, I guess, I guess they weren't the first ones to kiss. I guess Nina and Matthias had already kissed. But anyway, I thought Kaz and Inej would have made a little more progress than that first, but I was so excited because I wasn't fully sure we were supposed to ship them, but I totally still was. And so the fact that like Jesper was the one to make a move really caught me off guard and I was so excited. I had butterflies. I was gonna run in here and tell you guys how excited I was. And then I read the next few pages and realized it was the wrong person. <laughs> I am upset. <laughs> the whole time Jesper is like, this feels wrong. Why doesn't this feel the way it's supposed to? It's because it's the wrong person. Why? Why is Lee Bardugo playing with my emotions? I don't understand. I don't know why, I, how I asked for this. 
but I'm upset. And the fact that Wylan walked in and saw them kissing and now he's probably super upset. I'm just so sad because we were so close to something so good. <laughs> Hey guys, so I actually have not read anymore since the last time I saw you, but I did take a break from reading and I went book shopping because obviously I need more books. So I figured I'd pop on here and show you guys what I got and I'll probably do a much bigger book haul because I have at least like 17 books that I haven't hauled yet. So I'll probably do a book haul at some point, but I figured I'd just let you know which ones I got today. I got the last book in the To All the Boys I Love Before series because I haven't read it yet and I got the other two from the bargain section and I finally found the third one. So I was excited to get that one. I also found The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren in the bargain section and I was super excited because I have read this one from the library but I didn't own it. So it was perfect that I saw this too. I got Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller, which is book two following Daughter of the Pirate King, which I haven't hauled this one yet either, but I did read this. I love it so much. Gave it five stars, and so I needed to know how it continued, so that's why I picked up this one today. I found The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black in the bargain section, which I'm so excited because I've read The Cruel Prince. I own that one, and then recently I was gifted The Wicked King. Let me grab that. So this was given to me as a gift. And so now I found the third one and I can probably binge the rest of the series soon. So I'm very excited. I also picked up The Cost of Knowing by Brittany Morris, which just came out on the 6th of this month. And I'm so excited to read this. This has been on my radar for a while. And I feel like the concept's really cool. It's about this main character who, when he like touches things or people, he gets like flashes into the future and I don't know if that makes sense. He gets glimpses of the future and he ends up touching something that shows him his brother's death. And so he has to try to work through that and make sure that doesn't happen. And that's really interesting. And also the inside of this is really interesting. So I love that. And then the last book I picked up today was The Inf Infinity Courts by Akemi Don Bowman, which is another book that came out this month and one that's been on my radar forever. And this one just sounds amazing and the cover is gorgeous and this also has something in here too. So I'm obsessed. I can't wait to read all of these. I have so many books I want to read. So we'll see what happens next. But I just wanted to show you guys. My hair is kind of a mess because I was just laying down. But I finally was not lazy and got up to tell you guys some of my thoughts. I have a couple things I wanted to tell you guys. First was, oh, by the way, I'm on page like... 430 so at the beginning of chapter 32 but first thing is I loved that I don't know if it was in the bathroom wherever that scene was with Kaz and Inej where he was helping change her bandages that was just so cute I know it still wasn't like a kiss scene or anything but I feel like it was exactly what we needed I'm like still hardcore rooting for their relationship but it was just really sweet because they both told each other things or she told him things she's never told anybody else, and he pushed through his problems of touching another person to help change her bandages, and it was just so sweet, and I know it still didn't end the best because he's still, like, a little stubborn, but it made my heart really happy, and I really love that scene, and then I'm also very glad that Wylan changed his face back to normal and that him and Jesper finally kissed. I'm like so excited and I would have sounded more excited to tell you guys that if it weren't for thing number three I want to talk about which is the fact that Wylan just betrayed everybody and I am going to be so upset because they're already like trapped and this was it already seemed like they had no way out. Kaz finally created this plan to try to save them or at least most of them and if it doesn't work out because Wylan couldn't take a little bit of torture to save these people that have become his family, I'm going to be very pissed off. Because if I lose one of my babies because Wylan spilled all the secrets, that's not okay. And there's still a part of me that has faith in him and I feel like he didn't ruin the whole thing. But like the last sentence of the last chapter that I just finished, it says he told them everything and I am upset. I only have maybe a hundred pages left and I'm not ready for it to end, especially if it's going to end poorly with one of them being hurt or killed. I'm not ready. 
I just finished chapter 33 and I am so glad that Wylan did not betray all of us. I keep saying us because I'm part of the team, obviously. But I like still have a little bit of faith in him like I said the last time. But I'm so glad I was right because I wanted to believe in him. I love him. I want to protect him. So I'm glad that he didn't betray everybody. And somehow theme things seem to be working out again. I have no idea how. Usually I can see plot twists coming and sometimes I can even figure them out, but I feel like Lee Bardugo has tricked me so many times in these books and I just, I can't comprehend because all these things keep happening and I'm like, how is this working out? What is going on? I just finished chapter 37 and since we last talked, Inej finally took out that assassin that was trying to kill her and I, it's funny because they're both so badass but it wasn't even like a badass death it was just like she fell off the side of a building so that was kind of ironic but honestly kind of funny which was good because I feel like sometimes you need a little humor in this book because it's really dark sometimes like the fact that Kaz said that he buried somebody's kid alive and I kind of felt like he was bluffing, but with Kaz, you never know because he seems so intense and like he's willing to do anything to protect himself and the people he cares about. So I wasn't sure, but I'm glad to know that he had never even seen the kid, didn't bear anybody alive, so that's good. But that's really all that's happened since we last talked. I just feel like those were big moments, so I wanted to update you guys on my thoughts. But we are really getting close to the end now. I am on page 480 and I think there's only like 540 pages, so we're getting there. I'm not ready. <laughs> wow, I didn't make it very far. I literally read the next paragraph and I'm amazed. I totally forgot that they ended up shooting, I don't know how you say his name, Kawei? I'm gonna say Kawei, I don't know. But they ended up shooting him and Again, I can never trust anything in this book, so I really thought that they were just trying to kill him to, like, get it over with, but then I was also like, maybe there's a bigger plan, and apparently there was, because I don't think he's really dead. They purposely, like, planted this little thing in his shirt that when it was hit with a rubber bullet, it would, sh like, spray blood everywhere, and so everybody thinks he's dead, and they'll, like, it, like, leave him alone, and he can probably have, like, a normal life now, as long as nobody finds out, and... I'm here for that because I kind of felt bad for this guy. He was kind of dragged into all this crap for no reason, just because of his father. You guys, Matthias just died. I just finished chapter 40 and he died and I'm really sad, but also part of me is like a little bit relieved. I know the book's not over yet, but I think he was kind of the character I connected to the least, which sounds horrible because I love them all so much, but... I feel like I would have been more upset if it was like Kaz or Inej because they're kind of my favorites. Even though I think the more I read and it, when I reread the series, I think I'll start to love the other characters just as much. But I'm still really sad and I feel bad for Nina because I feel like she's like devastated. But then like reading chapter 40 from Matthias's perspective and like him feeling like he's finally home and he's at peace, like... Even though it's like bittersweet, I'm kind of happy that he feels at peace because I know he always had like this inner turmoil going on and I don't know, I'm just sad. <laughs> I finished it. I finally finished Crooked Kingdom and although it played with my emotions, it did not wreck me as much as I thought it was going to and I'm glad. I feel like hearing people talk about it, I was really, really scared to read it. But thankfully, it didn't hurt me too much. There were definitely scenes that really threw me so many plot twists. I didn't see like half of them coming. I feel like this book had more plot twists in it than like most of the other books I've read, maybe even combined. So that was great. I still love all these characters with all of my heart. This duology was amazing and I definitely understand why it's so hyped up literally all over the book community. It's so good. I'm so excited to see these characters in the Shadow and Bone show that's coming out in a few days. I think maybe a little over a week. That's so soon. I'm going to go look up fan art for all of these characters because I need to see them. I need to still love them and think about them. I'm obsessed. Also, I feel like I heard that there might be a third book coming out as part of like Six of Crows. And I'm not sure if that's a rumor or if it's true, but I really hope it's true because this 
ending was great, but like, I'm not done with these characters. I want to see Inej come back to Kaz. I mean, he bought her her ship. He found her parents and like, that was the sweetest thing that's happened in this whole series. I love it so much. I want to see more of Wylan and Jesper. They're super cute together and Wylan has his mom back. I, sorry, this whole vlog is just filled with spoilers for Crooked Kingdom. So hopefully I didn't ruin it for any of you guys because I really don't want to, but I love that. And even though Matthias isn't here anymore, I hope Nina turns into like this even more badass warrior than she already is. I hope she goes back to her people and helps with the army. And I just want to see what she does with Matthias's legacy and if her powers transform at all. I just, I'm not done. And I hope there's a third book because I would buy it right away. I need that so bad. I'm going to go do research because I can't remember if it's really true, but hopefully it is. Again, I love this so much. Oh, I'm definitely giving it five stars. I haven't reviewed it yet on Goodreads, but totally five stars. It's so good. I can't cope. Hey guys, I haven't seen you in a while, but it is now Thursday and I got off work a few hours ago, but I decided to start The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. I actually couldn't decide on my own, so on my Instagram and my TikTok, I posted both of these books, Crave and The Shadows Between Us, and I was like, please help me decide because I can't. And surprisingly, I got a lot of responses. Most people told me to read this one, which I was kind of leaning toward anyway, but then there were some people who very strongly wanted me to read Crave. So I'm definitely doing this one next because I'm excited to see what people are talking about. But I found out that this one's like purposely cringy and it's supposed to be really funny. So I kind of like that. I haven't really read anything like that. So I'm excited. I think it's supposed to make fun of like books like Twilight and things like that. So that's really fun. But I did start this one and I started reading it at work and I'm 50 pages in. And I'm honestly really liking it so far. I was hoping I would because this sounds really cool. It's like about this girl who creates this whole plan to woo the Shadow King. I think woo is a funny word. But basically woo him, marry him, and then once she's queen, kill him and take his powers and his kingdom for herself. And that sounds really cool. And I also am obsessed with this cover and like the little dagger on it. Maybe it's a sword, I don't know, but I think it's a dagger. But super fun. And also, I recently read Daughter of the Pirate King by the same author. Loved that. I immediately went out and got the second book because I need to know what happens. So, I really like this author's writing, so I was really hopeful. And it's a standalone, which I love. Her characters are just really great. I don't think I can relate to her characters because most of them are like super confident and badass, and that's not really how I see myself but they're written so well that I always am like fascinated by them. And Alessandra, I think that's how you say her name, I'm not sure, who is our main character here is no different. She's very, I can't even say confident, it's more like cocky and arrogant, but it's like kind of fun to watch. And I also really love the Shadow King in here. He's very like mysterious and he definitely caught my attention from like the first scene of seeing him. He's a really cool character and I love that his powers are so mysterious because there's so many rumors about what his shadow powers can do but nobody really knows for sure. And I'm very excited to find out more about that and it's just really fun and I love that this is like it takes place in like this royal court kind of vibe. So I really like that. I'm really loving it. I'm gonna read a lot more and I will see you guys soon. I'm about 40% done so far and I am still loving it. I really love the writing. I am really starting to love Alessandra. I feel like at the beginning she was like a little too arrogant for me and she's still a little arrogant, but I love that She's kind of getting a little bit more frustrated with the king because he's not showing her as much attention as she wants him to, and I think that's really fun. Also, I'm really loving all of her friends that she's gained at the court. I feel like the girls are amazing, and I think she picked some good friends at the very beginning, but I also really love, I think his name's Leandros. Yeah, Leandros. I think he's super fun, and if she doesn't end up with the king, he's a good option because 
he is really fun and he's very flirtatious and I love seeing him too. And I don't know, it's just very good. I'm loving the plot so far. And also, I feel like the king is a very interesting character because I'm not going to say too much because I don't want to spoil it. But I feel like I thought he would be showing her a little bit more attention than he is. And it's kind of surprising me that he's not. And then he's kind of like not blaming her, but putting it on her being like, well, the things you're doing is what's making us look bad. I feel like that's very vague, but if you've read it, you kind of know what I mean. So I'm curious to see what happens with that because he's kind of frustrating me right now. Just a little bit. So I didn't get much further since the last time I was in here. I think I might have read one, maybe two more chapters. But we found out more about the Shadow King's powers. And I'm intrigued. I didn't know what I was expecting, but that definitely was not it. I really like everything we found out. I feel like that's really interesting. Also like a tiny bit sad, but... I'm really intrigued and I'm excited to see where this goes. Also a little nervous because things could go really wrong. So we'll see. So I read a few more chapters and this might sound like a spoiler but it's not because the synopsis talks about it but there was an assassination attempt on the Shadow King and it was honestly a very interesting scene. I really liked it. I couldn't really picture all of the action. I don't know if that was just because I kind of skimmed because I just wanted the part of Alessandra and the Shadow King interacting because I'm really rooting for them and they're making some progress in their relationship so that's really what I'm here for but it was a really interesting scene I actually really liked it I would like to have this turned into like a movie or a show I always say that but then I feel like if it was actually going to be turned into like a movie or a TV adaptation I would probably be really worried that they'd screw it up because that's usually what happens but I would love to see some of these action scenes on the screen because I feel like I picture it in my head but I don't think I really do it justice but like I said I feel like Alessandra and the Shadow King I think his name is Callias that's how I'm saying it hopefully that's correct I feel like they're making a lot of progress in the relationship and I'm very excited because obviously the whole premise of this book is that Alessandra is trying to like fake their relationship and have him fall in love with her so that he she can kill him but I'm really hoping that she just falls for him because I really, really like him. I thought I was gonna, you know, hate him, but Trisha Levenseller writes the love interest so well. I love him so much and I don't want anything to happen to him. So I really hope they fall in love and she decides not to kill him and then they live happily ever after. I don't think it's gonna be that kind of story, but I can hope. Hey guys, I am about 80% done and I'm still loving it and I had to come on and give you guys an update because I just finished the last chapter and I could not stop laughing. I think on page 262, I can't tell you any specifics because I would be spoiling things, but that whole page just made me laugh. I was not expecting the king to react that way to the situation and I I found it hilarious. That caught me off guard and I loved it so much. And I really love the way his relationship with Alessandra has grown and I am just very happy. I love this so much. I love the writing. I love the characters. And there's still 20% of the book left, so I'm a little worried that things are going to start to go wrong because it feels a little too good to be true right now. So I'm not done with the book yet, but I just finished chapter 27 and I think it's my favorite chapter of the whole book. I'm going to try to be very vague because I don't want to spoil anything, but that was the chapter where they kind of confessed their true feelings for each other and I'm obsessed because, you know, their relationship prior to this had some stipulations and they finally decided that they didn't really care and they just cared about each other and it was just a beautiful chapter and I couldn't stop smiling and it was great. And I also love that this book has a little bit of steam to it. Nothing compared to like adult romances because that's a lot of steam. But definitely some sizzle, you know, and I didn't no, I needed it in this book, but it's so good. It's so good. 
this whole book, I feel like I've just flown through it. I've really enjoyed it. I didn't expect to love it as much as I am loving it because so many people said that they loved it, but for some reason I was like, I think I'll enjoy it, but I don't know if it'll be a favorite of mine. But it's definitely at least a four star read, probably a five star read depending on how it ends. But again, I'm a little nervous because there's only a couple chapters left, so we will see how it ends. Also, something I never mentioned is that there's also like a mystery element to this book, which I did not expect. It wasn't really part of the synopsis, but I'm really loving that element too because it's a lot of like, who do you trust? I have no idea who did this crime, and I really love that too. It's so fun because it kind of reminds me of... If you ever watched that show Rain, which was like a royalty show with um, uh, Mar Queen Mary of Scots. I don't know. It's been years, like a long time since I watched it. But it kind of reminds me of like a similar vibe. It's like it takes place in like this royal court and like everybody has to follow all this etiquette and it's like super formal. But then it's also like behind the scenes. It's like everybody is doing all these like criminal things and it's like super badass and like people are trying to like kill each other and all that stuff so it kind of gives me similar vibes so if you like that show you'll probably like this book all right guys i finally finished it i'm a little tired because it's pretty much midnight and i had to stay up to finish it because it was so good i loved the way it ended i really did after i last saw you guys some things went down and i was very worried but I'm very happy with the ending. I'm sad that it's over though. <laughs> See, I love standalones because I love that they're like wrapped up at the end, like you know the ending of the story. But at the same time, it's like I love these characters and I adored this world and the plot and the writing and I don't want it to be over. <laughs> but it was so good. I loved this way more than I thought. It's another five-star read, which I'm very surprised. So far, every book I've read in this vlog has been a five-star read. And I am surprised, again, I think I just said that, but usually I have like one or two five-star reads and then it drops to like a three because nothing lives up to that for a while. So I'm very surprised I love this one as much as I did, but I'm so glad I finally got to read it. I've had this one for a while now. I feel like I got it at the beginning of this year, so I'm glad I finally got to it. But yes, I highly recommend you guys read this if you haven't. The plot is really good. There were a couple huge plot twists that really threw me, and it's very interesting. The whole plot is just a very interesting premise, like the fact that, you know, she wants to basically trick him into loving her and marrying her just so she can kill him it's like complicated in itself but then also all these assassination attempts against him and there's like this mystery of trying to figure out who's trying to kill him and it's just like the perfect formula for an amazing standalone and it was so well done i think trisha levenseller is becoming one of my favorite authors she's up there with carrie Maniscalco and stephanie garber for me and that takes a lot. I feel like I love those books and those authors so much. So the fact that I've been loving everything I've read by Trisha Levenseller is saying a lot. And I found out by the back of this book that she has another book called Warrior of the Wild. And after I read Daughter of the Siren Queen, I'm going to figure out where to get that because I'm loving the way she writes her books. It's just... It always holds my attention and I cannot put these books down until I finish them. So I'm going to get everything I can that she's written. But I definitely recommend 5 out of 5 stars. I'm going to do a Goodreads review now so I can like write down all of my thoughts. But I really loved it. Hey guys, it is Friday. It's actually like 1 a.m. on Friday because I didn't start reading Crave until like 11 at night. So I didn't really have enough thoughts to update you guys until now. Also, I couldn't put it down. If I didn't have to work tomorrow, I would totally stay up late and just finish the rest of this because I'm loving it. I, for some reason, didn't expect to love it as much as I am. I feel like I'm always very weary of vampire books because of Twilight. Like I loved it when I read it when I was in like fifth grade, but I feel like it's kind of like cliche. And I feel like 
I, at least I was told by some of you guys that that's kind of the whole point of this is it's like everything you expect from like classic YA like vampire novels. It's like kind of cliche and cringy, but it's also great and it's also hilarious. I'm obsessed with all of the chapter titles. Like this one's sometimes keeping your enemies close is the only thing that prevents hypothermia or I don't know, I can't find any of the other ones right now, but a lot of them make me laugh out loud. And I've literally, at the beginning of each chapter, I've made my fiance listen to what it's called because it makes me laugh. Like this one's things Hot Pink and Harry Styles have in common. They're just like good breaks in the plot and I think it's hilarious. Also, I love Grace and I love Jackson. They have a lot of chemistry, which I wasn't expecting because I felt like this would be very cliche. And even though it is, there's still like a lot of like palpable chemistry, which I love. It's like super fun. I love that there's like your classic love triangle and then Grace's cousin, Macy. I love Macy. She's super fun. And I just honestly really love everything about this. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I am, but it's great. And I wasn't sure if I would continue the whole series. I know there's, I think, three total out right now. I think book four comes out later this year. I'm pretty sure. And I didn't expect to want to read the whole series, but I definitely do. And I wish I could stay up and finish it. I really do. I'm so tired. I can't really gather my thoughts. So hopefully my little review made sense, but it's really great and I'm having a great time. Hey you guys, it is Saturday and I finally got off work. It was actually a longer day at work, but I managed to read almost 200 pages while I was there, which is great because like I said in the last clip, I was so sad I had to go to sleep last night. I just wanted to read this all in one sitting. That's how much I'm loving this book and I keep laughing while I'm reading it. Like it's so well done and like the plot's amazing. I love the characters, but I love how like cliche it is and some parts just catch me off guard and I've been laughing a lot. I keep talking to everybody around me like all my coworkers. I kept telling them about what was happening because it was making me laugh and I think I'm obsessed with it. I want to get the second book. I try to tell myself that I'm on a book buying ban, which I've never done before, but I've been buying a lot of books recently and I'm like, I just need to stop, but I don't think I can. I think I need the next one. I think it's called Crush, if I'm correct. But I like, I really need it. Also, I'm still loving the chapter titles. Like some of my favorite ones, I'll just tell you guys like two of them. I love this one. I don't know why, it just makes me giggle. I always knew there was fire between us. I just didn't realize it was your breath. That's great. And related to that, love that chapter. Love the whole marshmallow scene. Like if you know what I'm talking about, it made me giggle. I couldn't believe it. That was one of the main parts I told some of my coworkers because <laughs> it's just not what I was expecting. And then one of my other favorites, let me see if I can find it, was, is that a wooden stake in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> that was probably my all time favorite in this book. I'm obsessed. I feel like usually when you see chapter titles, they're like not boring, but they're more like formal or a little more descriptive. And these are just very blunt and they catch me off guard. And I love that. Also still really love the characters. I really love Jackson. I feel like I didn't expect to enjoy his character as much as I am because when I read the Twilight series, which is what this reminds me of the most, I was definitely team Jacob. I liked Edward, but I was leaning more toward Jacob. So I didn't really expect to like Jackson as much. I felt to have, I, <laughs> I thought I would have, you know, similar vibes with him as I did with Edward, but I love him. He's very sweet. I feel like he really cares about Grace and it's really great to see them interact together. And he's also still very badass. Like, I feel like Edward wasn't that intimidating. He was supposed to be, but he really wasn't. But like Jackson has the best of both worlds. He's like super sweet and amazing with Grace. And he does all these really sweet things for her. And then he's also super badass and like honestly kind of scary. And I love that combination. So he's great. Definitely adding him to my list of book boyfriends, which I was not expecting, but it's super fun. And I love that this book, it doesn't just have vampires in it. It has some other creatures too. So that was really fun. 
and not ones that I would expect. I expected there to be like a werewolf in here and so far I don't think there has been but I really love the collection of creatures. It just everything about this has been amazing and I feel like I haven't been able to gather my thoughts because I've just been flying through. I'm almost 400 pages in so I'm almost done with it. I think there's 550 or something like that. So we're getting there. And as soon as I'm done with this clip, I'm gonna go finish the rest of it because it's literally consumed my thoughts. Like at work, all I wanted to do was read. I honestly got really annoyed when I had to actually do my job, which is kind of sad. Don't tell my boss that, that's probably not good. But I'm excited to be home and now I get to read more and it's amazing. And now I see why so many people told me to read this. I just finished chapter 55 and I am shocked. I knew something was gonna go down because we're getting to like the end of the book. So I knew something was going, going to go down because it's been like kind of smooth for a little bit, but I did not expect that. Like I really didn't. <laughs> Everything about what happened in that chapter surprised me. I just, I don't want to tell you guys what it is because I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but I just had to come in and say that I'm surprised. I didn't think that was going to happen. I, like I said, I knew there was going to be a plot twist. Something was going to go down. I knew there was probably somebody that like we couldn't trust, but I never thought it would be this person. Like it makes sense. I probably should have known, but <laughs> as you can see, kind of at a loss for words, but Chapter 55, it's trip. That's all I gotta say. I have maybe only 60 pages left and I'm not ready for this to end because I don't have the second book and I just wanna binge the rest of the series that's out. I'm loving it so much. Also, I just read page 508 and just that page alone was like a roller coaster of emotions. I was like super excited for like the first half. I literally squealed. I love that page for sure. But then like literally just a few lines down, I was so upset and I can't tell you why. I just want to tell you guys, but I, don't, I can't spoil things for you guys. So if you read it, let me know either in the comments of this video or on my Instagram or something so we can talk about it because there's a lot I want to talk about that I can't spoil for you guys. But yes, 508, definitely an interesting page. A lot happens. I loved it and then I was a little upset, but it was a great page. I'm sorry, this is probably like a really confusing update. It's my first reading vlog, so I'm not really sure what all to do, but I'm trying really hard to not spoil things for you guys because I would hate to be spoiled, but 508, good page. And I'm gonna maybe not come back until I finish the book. I can't promise that because I promised that earlier and I've been back twice since then, so we will see. But hopefully I will finish this book. But I also don't want it to end. I love Jackson and Grace. I finished it. I'm honestly really sad that it's over. I know there's more books in the series, but like I said, I don't have them. And I'm sad that I have to wait to see these characters again. But I loved it. I still have, like, there's three bonus chapters told from Jackson's perspective. So I still have to read those. But I wanted to update you guys on my thoughts. The last chapter of the book was told from Jackson's perspective, which was very interesting. I love seeing the guy's point of view if the whole book's told from the girl's perspective. I always think that's really fun. And so I like that it ended that way, but there was such a big plot twist at the end and I can't believe it. I mean, I kind of figured, I don't know, there were little hints, like now looking back, I could see some hints leading up to this plot twist, but I did not expect it. I didn't expect how it came about and everything about like the last few chapters blew my mind. <laughs> I have said it so many times in these clips, but I love this book. I genuinely did not expect to enjoy this as much as I did because like I said earlier, once I found out that this book was kind of a book mocking all of the 
like older YA, like vampire novels. I really didn't think I would enjoy it. I feel like usually when there's books or things that are supposed to be like satire or are supposed to, I don't know, make fun of other things, I usually don't enjoy them as much. It's not usually my vibe, but everything about this book was amazing. Like I genuinely loved the characters. I loved the plot. I loved how creative the world was because, I don't know, there's so many parts that were super cliche and a little bit cringy, but they were perfect. Like, I am fangirling about every aspect of this book, and I love the different kinds of creatures that are in here. I didn't expect some of them, so it was very fun, and I just need to read more about this world. I was kind of not sure how quick I would read it because it's like almost 600 pages and I flew through this. It's, it hasn't even been 24 hours. I think I started this at 10 or 11 last night. I only read for like an hour or two last night and then I didn't start again until two hours ago maybe. Well, I guess I read at work too. But basically it has not been that long and I flew through this book even though it's super thick and it's really easy to read. And part of that, I might have flown, I might have been able to fly through it because, well, you can't really tell on the screen. It makes them look a lot smaller. But I feel like the words are pretty big and there's a good amount of dialogue, so that definitely helps. But it's also just like a very easy read. Like there's not a lot of description or like, you know, it's not like they spend a whole paragraph describing like a tree or something, like some other books which I appreciate because there's certain fantasies that I really like the description if it's written really well and like draws me in, but typically I skim through the description. I get enough of it to picture the scene and then I kind of like skip over stuff because I usually care more about the characters and the dialogue and like the romance and all of that. So I appreciated that there is pretty, not blunt, I don't know if blunt the right word, but it's very straightforward. There's not a lot of extra words and you know, extra descriptions, and I really appreciated that. Just the writing in general was great. I've never read anything else by Tracy Wolf. I don't know if she has anything other than this series, but I really enjoyed her writing, and it's just amazing. Like I said, I've talked to so many people about this book today, which usually I don't do. Like, when I go to work, even though I'm reading, I usually don't talk about it unless somebody asks me what the book's about, even if I really am loving the book, just because that's not why we're there. We're there to work. But today I kept telling different people about this book because it made me laugh. I don't think I've ever read a book that made me laugh as much as this one. So if you're looking for something that is slightly cringy and cliche and has all of like the classic YA tropes and everything, but also will make you laugh out loud, you should definitely go for this. I loved the romance in it. They genuinely had a lot of passion, which I loved because again, I this book is so funny and I really enjoyed that even though there's like that humorous tone throughout the whole thing, there were also parts that were very dramatic, parts that were like romantic and sweet and it just had so many emotions and I just love it. I kind of want it to be a TV show or a movie. I feel like it would do really well as a movie, honestly, if it's done well. Like I don't want it to be... Like, if you guys remember that book, Fallen, I don't even remember who that's by, Lauren Kate or somebody, that movie, was it called Fallen? I think so, with like the angels and stuff. That movie was not good. <laughs> I watched it anyway, but it wasn't great. So I really, any book that I love, I want it to be adapted into a show or a movie, but I'm always nervous and hesitant so we'll see i think i just want to see it played out in front of me because i want to see these characters and i want to experience the story in a different format so if you guys have any fan art for any of these books or know of any like i don't know anywhere that i can find other versions of the story or like fan art things like that i would love that because i've been loving every book that i've read during this vlog so far and that just makes me really happy. It's been a while since I've enjoyed like every book I've read in a week and it's just great. I'm giving this one five out of five stars too. That's what I've given every book in this vlog. I usually don't think I give five stars very easily, but I feel like this vlog is not proving that point. So we'll see, but definitely 
read this book. Read all of these books I've talked about so far. They are amazing. And I'm really glad I'm enjoying them because when things are super hyped up anywhere in the book community, I get so scared to read them because I feel like I'm going to end up hating it. I usually just in general, anytime there's something that's really hyped up or everybody's talking about it, whether it's like music, a show, a movie, anything like that, I try to not, I like try to keep away from it because it makes me nervous. Hey guys, it is Monday and I realized that I never filmed an outro for this reading vlog so I wanted to come on here and just recap a little bit. This week we read Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. We read The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller and Crave by Tracy Wolf. And I loved all of these books, as you could tell from this vlog. And I'm so glad I read these. They're some of my favorite books I've read ever and especially this year. So I'm really glad I got to record my reactions for you guys. This is my very first reading vlog, which I think I might have mentioned a few times. But if you guys have any tips or any suggestions for what you usually like to see in vlogs, please let me know because I really enjoyed doing this, but I know that there's plenty of room for improvement. So I would love your guys' help if you could comment that below for me. And please like this video if you enjoyed it and also subscribe. I love doing videos for you guys. And if you do subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you know when I upload next. But thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in my next video.